dear students, hello, I'm glad to meet you. I'm here. Hello, doctor. Hello. Hello. So probably uh, it's time to start, right? Should we wait for the rest? Maybe let us start, okay? Yes. Great. Tell me, please, um, is this your first class or lecture in uh, occupational disease, or uh, do you have any previously? It's the first one. The first one. Thanks. Good. So I'm twice glad to introduce this subject for you and uh, our department in general um, do you have at the moment any organizational questions any requests by which i could uh, adjust our today's lecture and probably uh, the whole course for you better what are your requests for occupational disease maybe you have any special interests ideas etc for now but maybe after the class. I hope. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so just a few seconds. I'm starting the first part, uh, presentation for the first part of our today's lecture. And it will be general aspects of occupational diseases and more specifically, more specifically, introduction of, uh, of our department and uh, what we are going to uh, discuss with you in the next three lectures and three practical class. I hope you, uh, you can see the screen, right? Do you see? Yes, yes, we can see. Yeah. So you're welcome to, uh, to the Department of Internal and Occupational Diseases of Kharkiv National Medical University. Here is the one of our, not latest, but previous before the active phase of war uh, photograph. Unfortunately, many, many of our teaching staff are not with us, but uh, we have some new younger but well experienced colleague and uh, we have three clinical bases uh, they're more specific for your studies in, in relation to occupational diseases is uh, clinics of scientific research institute of labor hygiene and occupational disease of kharkiv national medical university here we have two departments one of uh, which is therapeutic, one other is uh, neurologic, while we have some uh, separate words for patients with uh, uh, otorhinolaryngological pathology as well, ENT problems. Mm, while uh, in the majority of cases of our occupational patients, I mean patients with occupational diseases, they have combinations of different uh, uh, hazards of their working place and therefore diseases so it's a comorbid course of occupational different diseases and even non-occupational in, in different combinations a part of this uh, uh, to our other clinical bases are railroad clinical hospital with the wide spectrum of different uh, uh, departments uh, in, related to um, internal medicine and not only with pulmonological, hematological, nephrological, rheumatological, and other profiles, and regional military hospital, it's, the official name is much longer, but so they are not related to our today's uh, class and our today's topics, right? Uh, the practical classes, I'm not sure about the exact time of start, so it depends on your timetable, so that's why I left this. <laughs> uh, this uh, what form uh, blank 
um, and uh, they last for five academic hours each of them and uh, uh, totally you have three topics same topics three same topics for lectures and for practical classes lectures are usually preceding practical classes and uh, they are both uh, dedicated uh, to the first lecture and class for introduction and dust pathology second one for intoxications uh, of occupational origin and third one for occupational disease caused by physical agents and uh, here is the um, how the points academic points are arranged across the marks for excellent mark good and uh, satisfactory for each practical class as a final control we expect that you pass uh, the basic level control first quality level and second quality level as usually it is in it should be at any other department or uh, subject uh, in Kharkiv National Medical University and in all the Ukraine uh, the form by which it would be organized it depends uh, in the majority of cases we use uh, some tests and uh, conversation the higher mark you uh, are going to achieve more inter uh, interaction and uh, interview uh, you will have the lower mark uh, usually uh, expects that you just uh, pass the tests and of course attend all the classes and if not attended uh, work on them you may get some extra points as you can see here additional points for research work uh, students research work and uh, historically it's uh, our department we have uh, two main directions internal diseases or therapy and occupational pathology you may choose for instance you it's better of course if you choose some occupational tinge right occupational aspects of some uh, topic of your interest you uh, uh, our department's uh, research is dedicated to comorbid pathology of occupational chronic bronchitis occupational chronic obstructive paranoid disease occupational bronchial asthma or pneumoconiosis for one hand and in combination with arterial hypertension and or ischemic heart disease or coronary artery disease etc uh, and possibly in some again uh, combinations with vibration disease and separately core pulmonale as a complication of respiratory pathology or you may choose some specific your own topic in relation to occupational disease if you want to get these extra points for uh, the subject of occupational diseases or if you may even not limit yourself by occupation if you simply want to join our research at the base of our department and i would be happy to share my experience my uh, resources even maybe in this relation with you some of our former students have successfully studied uh, finished or graduated from Hakim national medical university admitted to uh, residentship uh, abroad in United States of America or in Great Britain or in Germany and in many other countries and successfully passed this extra uh, education and some of them have even uh, done and defended their dissertations for PhD level or if not just limit themselves uh, by their practice so I am eager to share with you this experience the main aim of our research is to improve diagnosis, treatment, prophylaxis or rehabilitation in, in relation to uh, following uh, aspects hygienic, hemodynamic, immune or inflammation, uh, fibrosis, dysfunction, endothelial dysfunction, oxidative stress and oxidation in, in general and protective aspects as well, genetic factors then uh, ai driven uh, clinical decision support systems and use of uh, different uh, aspects of variants of uh, reality uh, augmented virtual extended mixed realities 
in uh, different applications, of course, in medicine, more specifically in internal medicine and occupational disease. You may choose the form, the variant you uh, take part in our research, in our activities, whether you just mostly study or you, a part of studying, also produce something, you see. Uh, Again, I'm eager to teach you everything you might need. If I'm not proficient in anything, it's my duty to find someone who is. And finally, let me introduce myself. <laughs> my name is uh, Oleksiy. My first name is Oleksiy. My uh, surname or family name is Kalnikov. I'm professor of the Department of Internal and Occupational Diseases and happy to deliver today's lecture for you. Just one moment. Oh, I hear some rising hand. Yes, please, if you have anything to tell, do it now. Or oh, it was occasional. Oh, sorry, it was by mistake. No, no problem. Just feel free to, to comment anything. Uh, for instance, I forgot to send you the link for registration, uh, for feedback form and register registration form. I'll do it uh, at the time of break, between our two hours of the lecture. Okay, let's return. So, uh, occupational diseases, right? Uh, there could be two approaches to definition of this matter. For one hand, it's a branch, it's a segment, it's a sphere, a part of clinical medicine uh, dedicated uh, to the disease, the pathology caused by uh, occupational hazards, occupational insalubrity, some different factors which are present on every certain working place. Even here, in my case, I also undergo some, some occupational insalubrities. For one, for other hand, uh, uh, occupational disease might be defined as a group of diseases caused, which have etiological relation to these hazards we have mentioned with you. The um, mortality, the occupational mortality, varies greatly in different countries, in different regions, even in some of uh, regions of the certain country, from approximately one case per uh, 10,000 workers up to approximately 10 cases and 10,000 workers annually. Let's uh, focus now on the classification of occupational hazards. Totally, according to International Labour Organization, we distinguish five main groups and two additional. Five main are dust, different kinds of dust, by chemical structure, by size of dust particles, by uh, shape of these particles, etc. Chemical factors, different chemical su uh, substances. Uh, a group of physical agents, everything. Noise, ultra-infrasound, vibration, uh, electromagnetic fields of ionizing, non-ionizing spectrum, uh, even uh, traumas from moving constructions, etc. Force is uh, a group of biological factors, including everything, bacterial and viral, protozoal, fungal, and many others. And the fields of mean are, uh, are the factors, they are named functional or overstraining, um, uh, overstraining in turn might be physical or uh, mental and two additional allergic and carcinogenic uh, the reason to distinguish these two additional allergic and carcinogenic was the fact that uh, allergy or sensibilization and then allergic response might be caused by some biological agents with antigens by some uh, chemical substances uh, even uh, uh, sensibilization to some physical agents uh, is described, even if it is not so expressed. And especially oncological pathology. Tumors may be uh, at least uh, 
rigid or even caused by mechanical rubbing, by biological factors, viral and others, by uh, physical agents, ionizing radiation, for example, by chemical uh, cancerogens, and some kinds of dust also have uh, this carcinogenic potential. That's why these two uh, separate subgroups were um, distinguished. Again, dust, chemical, physical, biological, functional, and two additional, allergic and carcinogenic. Next idea. Uh, on the next slide, I will show you in uh, separate categories, but now on this uh, illustration, uh, I'm eager to highlight that, uh, as you can see, um, one in certain organ or group of organs, many different uh, agents may influence. For other hand, each of the agents, hazards, simultaneously influences on different uh, locations. This is a main idea of this illustration for you. For instance, I will uh, get, uh, get uh, I will send you the link to all my illustrations, presentations, even today's uh, recording for those who might miss the lecture or if you want to remind something. I record now all, all, all what is on the screen. So the very basic pathophysiological aspect of any occupational disease include five aspects. Multiple factor impacts yeah? in each certain place. Mm, simultaneously, many hazards influence on the any kind of worker. Even me, medical doctor, scientist, teacher, right? I'm sitting here almost comfortably, but as soon as I deliver many lectures, I conduct some conversation with many different people, and I undergo of um, mental overstraining just because of the specificity of uh, my work. For other hand, sometimes uh, I work so much. Uh, on my computer or with some gadget that this causes overstraining of my eyes, of my visual analyzer. Then uh, a part of this, uh, there could be other hazards like uh, as soon as I overstrain my vocal apparatus, I uh, might, uh, or this uh, situation might cause development of laryngitis, pharyngitis, and even specific vocal pathology in uh, speakers in general and in me as well and maybe some other occasionally see uh, the fact is that sometimes we state as occupational some pathologic process which is the result of some accident so normally there should not be any influence of some factor on the worker but by occasion not expectedly he might, he or she might uh, undergo that. For example, there could be ionizing radiation from some uh, nearby standing uh, uh, equipment. There could be uh, some overcooling or overheating, depending on the weather, or climate, or whatever it, it could be. It could be traumas even, occasional trauma. On the working place, it will be stated as occupational anyway. But all these factors influence, and there is a, or there is a risk of influence on each working place simultaneously of different factors. Second pathophysiological aspect I'd like you to remember about is all this monoetiology of each certain occupational disease. Regardless of the fact that uh, uh, rather often we have, uh, uh, for example, in some uh, minds, influence of uh, physical overloading, uh, overheating, overcooling, uh, increased concentration of dust in the air of the area, uh, chemical substances influence me, I mean intoxications. There could be uh, um, mechanical damage of the skin, uh, and many, many, and the risk of trauma, and many other uh, factors, but we distinguish 
that in each certain person under the influence of very different uh, uh, factors uh, we may diagnose one by one a different occupational disease each of which has a certain one etiological factor it could be combination of dust bronchitis with vibration disease with occupational deafness with i don't know let it be osteochondrosis of vertebra with 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 again but they are different diseases each of which has certain occupational origin if we state it as occupational of course and for instance um, maybe in, at other subject you study that some of diseases have uh, unknown etiology unknown cause but in occupational disease we always know cause cause or if this is not occupational if we do not know the cause we cannot prove the occupational origin we cannot state this disease as occupation the third important aspect of pathophysiology of occupational diseases polytropicity of each hazard and in turn the next fourth aspect is polysyndrome manifestation as i showed uh, previously on the illustration with the man and uh, projection of the influence of different factors on his body let it be lead for example right the lead presence in uh, aerophic area or a swallowing of some portions of it accumulation in the organism distribution all over the organism leads to um, affection of nervous system and appropriate structures of its brain spine peripheral structures of nervous system etc then uh, it influences on cardiovascular system with affection of heart vessels etc it influences on uh, GAT or gastrointestinal tract uh, non indirectly maybe but anyway uh, uh, mediated by affection of vegetative uh, autonomic uh, parts of uh, nervous system but anyway, this results in spastic colitis, in uh, um, hyperacidic gastritis, etc. Uh, then, force, for example, lead influences on organs of detoxication with affection of liver, separately with affection of kidneys and development of uh, nephropathy, and many and many many others. So, and this is applicable. This is actual for any other occupational hazard. It influences simultaneously on different subjects, on different organs, and in turn, we always have polysyndrome manifestation with symptoms, signs from all of the spectrum of, of different organs. And one of the most important for medical doctors is the fifth aspect of pathophysiology, a role of individual peculiarities. There are two main scenarios, one of which is resistance to influence of some factor, one other is opposite, is predisposition to influence. And regardless of the fact that for each certain hazard, a specific threshold value is known, is developed and distinguished, a maximum permissible concentration of something, some su uh, substance, or dust or maximum permissible level for noise for radiation etc but there could be exclusions when even in the sub thresholds concentrations some uh, substance may cause development of uh, the pathology in some unique people with some unique constitutional peculiarities of their body some uh, uh, related to maybe even genotype of them, right? Gen genetic uh, predispositions. And vice versa. Even influence of some hazards in uh, intent, intent, uh, intensity much exceeding the maximum permissible still does not cause the development of disease because of resistance. It could be also constitutional, genetically driven. Please keep this in mind, it's extremely important. Again, multiple factor impact, monoetiology of disease, polytropicity of hazard, 
Polis syndrome manifestation and role of individual peculiarities of each certain person. Here are the different approaches to classification of uh, occupational diseases. The first one is almost the same we have discussed with you about classification of hazards. Again, we have occupational diseases caused by let me show caused by dust caused by chemical substances caused by physical agents caused by biological agents caused by overstraining and two additional allergic disease and oncologic disease no need to comment i hope but there is a special other one classification mostly intended for students at the stage of studying mastering the occupational diseases sphere we distinguish specifically or specific occupational and non-specific or conditional specific in turn are subdivided into absolutely specific and relatively specific the absolutely specific are those occupational diseases which never may develop in non-occupational conditions never there are only two diseases vibration disease and pneumoconiosis while by relatively specific we understand that in the majority of cases these diseases are these cases right are occupationally related but by some certain conditions they could be so that it might happen in the general population as well for example in the majority of cases we meet uh, we're faced with uh, the morbidity uh, of uh, let it be intoxication with manganese among those people who are engaged in mining of appropriate ores manganese containing ores refining them uh, maybe in the metallurgic industry in steel working steel processing right in uh, machine building again steel is uh, used there uh, then uh, maybe where is more in electro welders as well and in some other um, applications but uh, in some very rare cases uh, some people some narcomanic uh, uh, nar narcotics uh, addicted people produce some narcotics with the uh, use of uh, sodium permanganate as far as i remember maybe i uh, let me think sodium or potassium permanganate but uh, manganese containing uh, substance and in turn uh, they may develop rather strong and expressed um, chronic intoxication with manganese and i uh, by myself saw these patients uh, in uh, psychiatric uh, narcologic uh, departments of the clinic unfortunately very rarely but it may happen same for poisoning with lead as soon as it might be easily melted at uh, even in a steel spoon sometimes children just play with it trying to produce some i don't know some dolls soldiers and anything like that some crafting something but then they go influence of this uh, lead and they may develop intoxication or if uh, some people do not uh, conduct proper hygiene personal hygiene and uh, swallow some abnormal quantities of this lead from some outer space and uh, unfortunately they also may develop this intoxication and and same for ionizing radiation it may also happen in case of uh, some accidents on nuclear station in population they are not occup occupationally related to it but it's very rare but the most uh, uh, wide spectrum of different diseases are non-specific at all or they are named conditional for example chronic bronchitis in the majority of cases its cause is uh, either smoking or infection or what else uh, 
some sensibilization, right? It's mostly related to bronchiolism. So some uh, ecological factors, right? But if some certain chronic bronchitis uh, would be uh, clearly associated with the uh, eti etiological influence of occupational hazard, of some dust that work in place, of some chemicals that work in place, etc., it will be stated as occupational. Same for any other, almost any. Uh, only less than 1% of all the diseases, all occupational diseases are specific. All the rest are non-specific. Okay. The other approach to classification of uh, occupational diseases is uh, systematic or by systems. Uh, pay special attention to the fact that, again, let me magnify this for you. We distinguish diseases with, what is important, predominant affection of some systems. Not just only one system is affected. It's, it never happened, just one system and not more. Predominant. As if you, I hope you remember, every time some hazard is influencing on the uh, organism, many systems suffer, always. But some of them might be predominant. By this we distinguish occupational diseases with predominant affection of respiratory organs, with predominant affection of uh, blood, nervous system, digestive, hepatobiliary system, sensory organs, locomotor system, uh, urinary system. Some of systems are not uh, uh, mentioned here because of some reasons that uh, they mm, do not have any special certain cause in which these systems would be affected predominantly, literally. For example, skin. Skin might be affected, of course, primarily in case of traumas, but it's not so specific because trauma might be without significant damage of skin as well. And we have even have a mental trauma, etc. Uh, for example, a reproductive system. Mm, there are no specific uh, substances or other factors that. Uh, definitely specifically selectively influence on reproduction not not other for example same for cardiovascular system it is affected more or less in any case or endocrine system etc that's why not all systems are listed in this slide and one of the most important slides <laughs> at all today's lecture is this one the diagnosis, the principles of diagnosis of occupational disease. If you would understand and remember and remind these principles, this table, you would succeed with almost any occupational disease. And I must say that even not only occupation, but non-occupational as well. For example, it's uh, rather important for clinical doctor of any specialty to know occupation of the person and i must even highlight that not even present occupation but also past occupations because it could be cases when some person admits to us when he has occupation of i don't know engineer at some machine building plant if we would limit ourselves only by this information we would think that oh we have engineer he is sitting, he is drawing something on computer, on paper, he is mostly thinking, it's intellectual work, etc. So what, uh, and uh, we would think primarily about appropriate hazards, right? Not so hazardous environment as it might be in his other occupation preceding uh, this position of um, engineer. He might has uh, might have uh, been working as an electro welder or some some physical worker, you see, and underwenting dust, physical overloads, chemicals, or and many many and many other noise, vibration, and other factors. So every time we are intended to think about occupational disease. We should ask the patient about, we name this, occupational anamnesis. Yeah, you're working now, or he might be even a pensioner already, right? But 
in what professions in what occupations have you did you have been um, did you work previously just make a list of course it's better if we get this from official documentation that's why i put here on the right side of this table occupational history right work record card or curriculum wise some official documents good the second one is work and experience experience or more specifically duration of work right it's also important for us because um, the average threshold of this duration after which the um, average risk of development of occupational disease is significantly higher is 10 years if some person has been working for 10 and more years in any occupation any profession any position we should be aware much more about some certain um, problems with his health specific to this occupation profession position we also get this from occupational history from, from what this person tells us from what his or her relatives tell us and from official documentation as well third and most specific for occupational diseases thing is working conditions in general medical practice in general case history we usually do not study and do not pay so much attention as we do in occupational diseases because we cannot prove the occupational origin of some problem of some pathology without uh, specifying certain working conditions what exactly do we need to know first and main is what occupational hazards factors has been influencing on this have been influencing on this person second one at what intensity did they influence by intensity we understand some certain concentrations some certain levels of influence third is a hygienic norm the maximum permissible concentration for certain substance maximum permissible level for certain factor of course is uh, mm, what uh, protective measures what prophylactic measures have been used in this certain case for these certain patients or person and uh, we wonder about this from either person and from official documentation for example what uh, protective measures what i mean some masks gloves uh, glasses i don't know helmets special clothes anything or they could be maybe some special ventilation or some extra vacation days for recovery or uh, uh, resort therapy or uh, occupation uh, maybe some uh, gymnastics at place of work or special baths or there are plenty of uh, different uh, measures or for instance preliminary periodic and target medical examinations and they and etc and the fifth aspect i promised to you is the quality of these protective or prophylactic measures it's not enough just to know that yeah, this person underwent periodical medical checkups annually. We should ask what doctors were present in this commission, a group of doctors examining you. If there was only one doctor, therapeutist, general practitioner, in some cases this might be not enough. Or, for example, we, we always ask this patient and check this in the documentation what additional investigations has been used laboratory is instrumental and if we know that they were just complete blood count or on no at all or just x-ray of chest this might be not enough to reveal some disease at the earliest phases at the earliest stages of development and we also must know the norms the standards by which these preliminary and periodic medical checkups should be performed what exact uh, medical doctors should uh, examine this each of these persons what laboratory and instrumental investigations etc 
The next step, fourth, occupational morbidity might be also essential for us. Why? Because if we know that from at some certain plant, at some certain factory, mine, I don't know any place of work, some people have already suffered from some diseases, so some diseases have been diagnosed in them, and some new people are admitted to us from the same working place, just neighbors of them, teammates of them. Of course, it's useful for us, for clinicians, to think primarily about similar or same diseases, or at least same factors influencing on this person, and think forward about most probable diseases, pathologies. Fifth aspect is health condition, or maybe fifth, sixth, and seventh, right? Health condition before start of work, during work, and after discharge, after stopping of working some place. In classic case, some person is employed almost healthy, gradually or suddenly, depending on the pathology, something happened, and then there is some course of this disease, of this pathology. St um, stable course, or progressive, slowly or quickly progressive, or regressive, improving. And in relation to stoppage of work, in classic cases, we have correlation between fact of stoppage of work and improvement of the health of some person. Then uh, the important things are uh, onset and course of the disease. Because for some certain diseases, there are specific patterns of beginning and course of diseases. And of course, we distinguish the ninth aspect of diagnosis, some certain signs. By signs, I understand not only clinical symptoms, but different information, data, which helps us to diagnose or exclude some diseases. We distinguish specific signs which are present only in this certain disease. Typical, which may be present in other diseases, but their combination is most typical for this certain. And non-specific, which is present in almost in wide spectrum of disease, if not all. Uh, this, at the tenth stage, we exclude other occupational, non-occupational diseases, and the eleventh stage or step, we prove the diagnosis of occupational disease. If it is first time of this improvement, it should be always mm, uh, diagnosed by a group of experts, by the commission. The general approaches to prophylaxis are represented on this slide. They are individual and uh, populational. They are technological and medical and social. So there is a wide spectrum. You study these at uh, the hygiene, the labor hygiene subject, right? Here is the main textbook I advise you to use. Specifically for you, I copy pasted the most important theoretical things to your um, practical uh, documents, the documents for practical work I'll introduce later. Now, uh, five, five or ten, ten, ten minutes for break. Okay, Professor. Now I'll try to admit. Professor, please, can you send us the presentation as well? Uh, I promised already. I will send the present, all my presentations, send this recording of the screen, the video yeah, of this lecture. Send thank you, you so much. Uh, some links, I'll show you now. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So I'll supply you with everything. Just one moment. I'll show you now. Um, I will share such uh, documents with you, which are intended for your better understanding of the matter 
and uh, it's like an individual uh, independent work of students you may do it or not it's for you uh, let me show you may put okay. some uh, questions here if you have any and mm -hmm. uh, uh, as you can see some information is already arranged in the tables mm -hmm. the comparison comparative tables for different occupational and non-occupational diseases with uh, uh, by the categories of complaints and history yeah. by physical examination by in with additional investigations laboratory instrumental and some other aspects and each of these categories uh, has common aspects for each of these diseases and specific for each okay. so i think this might be helpful for you plus at the very end of each of these documents there is a plenty of theoretical material as you can see uh, there are let me see 100 79 pages <laughs> here so uh, <laughs> you may prepare i just copy pasted this textbook uh, i'm not not uh, the final version of the textbook but author because okay. i co-author this textbook and i'm eager to improve it to actualize it and uh, uh, edit and publish again okay professor thank you so much so everything for you <laughs> just study <laughs> And what I want to do now is to uh, send you the registration form. To find here it is. Oops, let me see. Um, no, it's in Ukrainian. Let me find the English. Not of circulation, show me files. intro yeah we have this one copy Oh, I delivered this lecture almost one year ago. Very nice. Today we have 15th. Okay, and you are TIPS course 7A. Okay, result groups. Occupation trend dust. Good. Okay, and here are the questions. Yeah, you have everything here. Super. Okay, let me create a new and yeah, it's okay. And send from the thirteenth and go through. So I'll send you the link now to the registration okay. form. Okay, professor. And maybe I'll start preparing the email to you where I'll send the, the rest of materials. Okay. Okay. So 
the Lord has healed us. Yeah, it's me. Sorry, I disconnected. You're welcome anytime. Everything for you. Just study. Thank you very much. Good. So just a few minutes for break left. What I wanted to do is is what is maybe send you the links to everything. Meditation audio videos. Okay. Okay, it's time to continue. I'd like to show you and send later send the direct links to the following uh, useful things. Um, the courses uh, at uh, Moodle platform of Kaki National Medical University. Uh, among them, we have occupational diseases for the students of fifth year. Here is the link. I'll copy paste it to your email and send after the end of the lecture and uh, copy it to, to your chat now. Just a moment. The course of the Moodle platform. Yeah. Here it is. And the first one. Here inside you have almost if not all but almost everything needed to master this uh, subject additionally i send the link to this not even one but uh, three of documents i specially elaborated for my students for myself uh, again in um, in order to cooperate with the students and each of these documents is dedicated to uh, one of three uh, specific uh, topics of your practical classes and lectures, where all these things are, I, I believe, simplified, but at least arranged across the nosologic forms. You may add yours, you may correct here. So just make everything you want here. Um, just do it uh, in the cloud version of the document. Uh, you may download for your needs, of course, but uh, in order to share your work with others, please do it in cloud version. Uh, what next? Let me show you just a moment. Dust ontology, right? Here it is. 
the link then intoxications so i also have separate document and uh, occupational diseases uh, caused by physical agents let me see of these of these two here it is again it's uh, your next uh, topic of the lecture and practical class the second one i also uh, copy paste and send you copy link right and send you okay so shall we? i'll send it them all together and the third one is of this practical three same as you can see the same structure but different um, uh, theory right different contents oh it's yours sorry it was my mistake i put commander commander of course and here it is presentations again uh, all my presentations are available for you let me see and check so just follow it Intro introduction and dust intoxications and physical agents if you enter you can, you can see even exactly today's uh, presentations i show you here separate students research and this is the archive no need to to enter it because there are just old versions of the same presentations but please you may use any of them draft description of the training project ah oh. I also invite you to cooperate with me in uh, my own uh, initiative. I name it as it, as it is stated on the screen now. Let, let me show you why then. Uh, the cluster of dual medical education and enlightenment, yeah, of continuous health and medical professionalism. I do it in three uh, languages in English primarily actually primarily it was in russian but i translated into english and into ukrainian and just look through there are different of my educational initiatives you may kindly join as a volunteer as a expert if you are expert in, in anything or as a student also and uh, some of questions different student asked me I also send to you my comments on them. Okay, and uh, if you can see, uh, don't forget, for instance, to fill the um, feedback form of this registration form. I don't see anyone who has filled already today. And uh, uh, when I get some questions from you or some proposals, I also communicate with you by email or else how with my commands and answers that's all for this introduction or organizational things and let's continue with the dust pathology right it's our today's second topic if you have any questions feel free to ask let me check um, okay. good so uh, Again, so-called dust pathology, or better uh, pronounced as, make a screenshot. Uh, it's it may be uh, better named uh, occupational diseases caused by dust. Right? There are specifically, uh, absolutely specifically, uh, pneumoconiosis. In in no any other case except occupational, they may develop, or uh, conditional or uh, relatively uh, specific, uh, not even conditional, occupational chronic bronchitis, occupational chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, occupational bronchiolitis. But we will focus with you on pneumoconiosis now because they are absolutely specifically occupational. By definition, pneumoconiosis is a group of diseases caused by dust and characterized by diffuse um, pneumonitis or pneumofibrosis 
uh, bilateral, um, mostly in middle and lower regions, and uh, uh, diffuse, not focal but diffuse. By the definition, by the term, pneuma uh, is uh, comes from Greek uh, lung. And uh, Greek pneuma means uh, a lung, and cornea is dust, and oasis is some chronic disease. So, pneuma, uh, 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 what dust pathology of uh, chronic dust pathology of uh, uh, lungs, if literally translated, and it's really, tr really true. By uh, different approaches, uh, pneumoconiosis might be classified by etiology into five groups. Silicosis, it's pneumoconiosis caused by free silicon dioxide or the synonyms of it is silica or quartz. Then a group of silicatoses we, uh, uh, containing dust uh, with uh, silica acid or silicates. For example, silicosis, cementosis, and others. A group of carboconiosis caused by dust containing carbon. Anthracosis caused by coal dust. Graphitosis caused by graphitis and other. Occupation um, uh, pneumoconiosis named metalloconiosis. A group of pneumoconiosis caused by metallic dust like siderosis caused by iron dust, aluminosis caused by aluminium dust, etc. And uh, as an exclusion, so as you can see, the previous four groups were named by um, the cause, etiology, but the fifth one is named by the mechanism mostly, right? Hypersensitivity pneumonitis, many of them. They also uh, so they are caused by a group of substances with a strong sensibilization potential and in turn um, they might be subdivided or represented by berylliosis regardless of the fact that beryllium is metal but it does not belong to metal aconeus but more to hypersensitive pneumonitis because of this sensibilization uh, mechanism of its influence and development of berylliosis as a disease. Bisinosis caused by organic dust. By organic dust, we understand that, it, that it, uh, this dust is uh, uh, is derived from uh, um, plants or animals or something like that. Uh, toxic fibrosing alveolitis and others. Five represent some groups, right? There are also other etiological approach to pneumoconiosis, uh, which might be divided into three groups. Pneumoconiosis caused by high and moderately fibrogenic dust. There is a kind of dust in which the portion of free silicon dioxide exceeding 10%. And this silicon dioxide is very fine dust particles. Um, there is a special separate group of pneumococcus caused by low fibrogenic dust, where there is less than 10% of free silicon dioxide. And the third and final group of this approach to classification is hypersensitivity pneumonites or pneumonitis caused by dust of toxic allergic influence, similar to what we have in previous one, right? There also one more approach by X-ray picture, because of the fact that uh, any kind of pneumoconiosis is uh, uh, defined, uh, distinguished, uh, diagnosed mostly by visualization me methods, more specifically by X-ray or MRI or ultrasound, but mostly X-ray again. Uh, a special classification is developed in which there are also three main groups and one additional as a uh, pre-disease. One initial is initial fibrosis. As you can see on the slide, on the text uh, table, 
it has coding zero, right? Just zero. It's uh, characterized by intensifying of uh, intensification of lung pattern, some deformation of it, and nothing more. Very light fibrosis. It could be, in majority of cases, bilateral, with more maybe more expressed uh, right sided because of the fact that right bronchus is shorter and wider comparing to left one so more bigger amount uh, of dust enters this lung right lung and uh, this uh, leads to more prominent changes from that side but uh, in the majority of cases by progression uh, almost no difference uh, appears in real patients. The first uh, x-ray kind of uh, pneumoconiosis is interstitial. It starts from interstitial actually. Uh, it also is subdivided into, as you can see in different coding, STU, depending on the size of uh, this reticle of the linear structures in lung pattern into three different um, grades of this form. A part of interstitial we have nodular form, x-ray form of any kind of pneumoconiosis. It's mostly typical for silicosis, berylosis and uh, uh, such pneumoconiosis which with uh, strong uh, granulomatose inflammation because uh, uh, in any kind of pneumoconiosis the inflammation is granulomatose but uh, in uh, other kinds of dust like uh, coal dust or even iron dust or asbestos dust uh, there are other inclinations other uh, peculiarities of depositions and uh, uh, or uh, cellular response more distributed across the parenchyma or across the um, maybe uh, across the uh, pleura especially visceral pleura in case of uh, asbestos dust but in uh, silicon dust it mostly causes nodular spots across the uh, granulomas across the parenchyma of the lung. And the third and final form, x-ray form of pneumoconiosis is nodal. The difference between, between nodular and nodal is the size of these uh, opacities. If it is less than 10 millimeters, it's nodular. If more, it's nodal already. Even uh, 10 millimeters or one centimeter and more is nodal, less is nodular. And as you can see, there are, there are plenty of other aspects of uh, uh, X-ray picture of pneumoconiosis, which may be specified. And those of you who prepare themselves for medical uh, radiology, more specifically for X-ray evaluation, might be interested in this classification because it's international and it should be applied to in any countries. By X-ray, it's possible to distinguish the X-ray stages of um, pneumoconiosis. As you can see on the left, it's almost normal, not almost, but normal X-ray. For instance, of one, one of my <laughs> students, former students, now he's a doctor in Great Britain. And uh, one other is from patient with the uh, first stage of uh, some pneumoconiosis. We cannot be sure about the exact kind of pneumoconiosis. But probably, uh, as you can see, uh, there is um, widening of uh, lung roots, uh, maybe intensifying and deformation of lung pattern. Uh, maybe uh, increased transparency of lung fields, right? Because of emphysem, emphysematous condition of chest in general. And these are main uh, aspects of the first stage, uh, what we can get from x-ray, of course, at first stage of uh, pneumoconiosis. 
at the second stage there is a progression of emphasis of lung deformation of lung pattern intensifying of it so there are uh, usually some changes of hearts appear widening of uh, lung roots um, shadow and etc or opacity etc et and the third stage advanced stage very rare for instance there are even more expressed transparency and physiomatose condition of lungs and chest accumulation of this um, granulatous information in form of nodes tumorous form more expressed affection of uh, hearts as well in form of core pulmonary enlargement of uh, heart shadow etc here is the uh, full range of these changes from norm to most advanced stage in case of pneumoconiosis from point of view of x-ray but there are also other approaches to classification of uh, pneumoconiosis by stages we already have discussed with you by complications in form of a variety of uh, respiratory and extra pulmonary changes lung ventilation disturbances a restrictive component is always present but they could be combination of it with obstructive diffusive and mixed uh, variants and uh, there are four types of development and four types of course let us focus on them separately by development we distinguish acute development when um, the onset of pneumoconiosis takes place in less than five years after the start of work in contact with the dust we have fast development when these periods last for more than five years up to 10 years we have slow development with when it takes more than 10 years of development till uh, the onset of the disease and late development when some person has been working for some time then stopped finished working and in five and more years there is an onset of pneumoconiosis and four types of course when some stage has been already diagnosed of pneumoconiosis of course has been diagnosed and in less than 10 years there is a progression to next stage we name this quickly progressing if it lasts uh, more than five to ten years we, but there is progression from stage to stage we name it slowly progressive course when uh, ten and more years uh, what have uh, some disease has been diagnosed in some person and uh, not disease but pneumoconiosis in this case and no progression to next stage or regression to previous one happened we name this course stable or, or not recovery and the fifth uh, fourth variant is regressive when we have diagnosed first stage but in some time we have regression to norm recovery frankly it's imp impossible <laughs> in pneumoconiosis unfortunately fibrosis is it might be reversible but only partly not totally but we sometimes have cases when there is improvement when we diagnose second stage but in 10 or some quantity of years we see improvement to uh, first stage okay let me check the time mm, so what time do we have our lecture with you just one moment let me see okay we have some time till 3 p.m. by Kiev time. Good. Okay, about, uh, about, uh, approximately 20 minutes. Very nice. Okay. Oh, sorry. This one. So let's continue with some specific uh, types of pneumoconiosis. Silicosis. It's a pneumoconiosis caused by dust containing free silicon dioxide. Of course, name it quartz or silica 
the maximum permissible concentration of silicon dioxide in air fucking area varies from one to four milligrams per cubic meter depending on uh, uh, depending on the size of dust particles the smaller is the dust particle are the dust particles more uh, dangerous is the dust and uh, the higher is the risk of development of the disease the lower is mpc for such kind of dust if uh, the shape of dust again if it is rough if it is it causes irritation uh, damage of the cells it is more dangerous and the lower is the uh, concentration and i must say that uh, we must speak not about the clear dust i mean uh, uh, which uh, contains only and exclusively some certain disease uh, certain uh, substance but we should uh, talk about uh, industrial aerosol or just occupational aerosol which may, which consists of a dense fraction some dust and vapors or some um, uh, some uh, fumes right uh, of with some certain also other gases gases uh, co components of this aerosol but now we're more specifically about dust dust uh, is always also not uh, very clean by chemical structure and the higher is the um, the ratio of silicon dioxide in such cer some certain dust some certain uh, industrial aerosol the lower is ma maximum permissible concentration because it's dangerous if you remember we have even a special classific etiological classification of pneumoconius where the concentration of uh, silicon dioxide not concentration but uh, ratio of silicon dioxide is 10 and more percent or less right 10 and more is already dangerous and you must, uh, might even understand that even ground even sand is not chemically clean it's not uh, only silicon dioxide present in it that's why uh, there is such a range of uh, maximum permissible concentration values while for some other substances some other kinds of dust it will be just one threshold two milligrams per cubic meter or some other the main industries in which there is a relatively higher risk of development of silicosis include mining industry metallurgic machine building especially foundry departments of them production of oil uh, fire refractory materials construction works production of building materials etc tunnel working the working experience in average uh, in which uh, at which some certain workers might be at a relatively significant significantly high risk of development of silicosis is as i promised to you 10 years 10 and more is significantly da uh, more dangerous in the pathogenesis of silicosis development the main role is played by um, following aspects of uh, influence of the dust mechanical damage uh, leads to irritation and damage of mucous membrane cells and therefore uh, development of inflammation etc so-called colloid absorptive theory by which um, dust may produce secondary free radicals by itself by because of its uh, chemical structure and indirectly damage uh, cells and structures um, by these free radicals and according to immune components of influence uh, due to cellular reaction immune competent reaction on uh, the dust particles and uh, uh, maybe uh, even parts of damaged uh, cells leads to formation of uh, granuloma and finally we have uh, development of diffuse 
fibrosis, granodose fibrosis reactions uh, with appropriate uh, uh, different components of the pathogenesis like fibrosis and remodeling of lung structure, like extrapulmonary eff uh, effects and affections of, uh, for example, joints and connective tissue all over the organism, etc. And uh, on this slide, uh, you may see uh, the specimen with the so-called corneophages th that are macrophages with uh, swallowed dust particles inside them uh, got from bronchoalveolar liquid, Lewis. And it's magnification by 1000 times. One more uh, specimen with silicoma uh, taken by biopsy from the lungs with magnification by 100 times. From point of view of clinical diagnosis, clinical manifestation, the main complaints the patient have are uh, dyspnea, mostly inspiratory. Then after some period of course, uh, there could be either pain in chest or cough development. If cough uh, develops, it's mostly non-productive or low productive, I mean, uh, with uh, uh, lack of uh, sputum. And pain in chest is uh, bilateral, related to lung uh, excursion, uh, breathing excursion, and uh, it's transient, it's not uh, permanent. Sometimes it appears, sometimes not. It is mostly caused by pleural effusions as a secondary process to affection of a lung parenchyme. Here is the outlook of uh, the macro specimen of lung from patients with uh, pneumoconiosis in general and silicosis more specifically. As you can see, uh, there are uh, visible even depositions, huge depositions of uh, dust and deformation of lungs and deformation of visceral um, pleura. Therefore, this causes development of this clinical symptom, among others. At physical examination, we uh, might uh, detect emphysematose deformation, enlargement of chest, um, bang box or mosaic percussive sound, uh, by auscultation, uh, rough breathing with sometimes wheezing, uh, at, at, and, and other auscultative uh, patterns typical for mostly bronchitis and uh, interstitial changes in lungs. As you can see on the slide, usually we observe uh, bang box sound uh, above the emphysematose regions and dull percussive sound uh, above uh, lung roots and other foci of such a dense condition of lung mm, tissues. And uh, we should be aware also about uh, possible extra pulmonary affections in form of collinaire Kaplan syndrome. It's a combination of silicosis with rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, with the systemic affection of uh, connective tissue, dermatomyositis, sc uh, systemic sclerodermia, and others. So it could be even distribution of uh, dust particles all over across the organism with accumulation of them in um, synovial membrane and in other locations all over the organism. Of course, the most uh, useful uh, investigation for diagnosis of uh, pneumoconiosis are um, X-rays. It could be computer uh, uh, rhinologicical computer tomography or ordinary X-ray. And in some rare cases, we also use uh, um, MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, 
and even more rarely ultrasound investigation. On this slide, you might observe uh, the pneumoconiosis, uh, most likely silicosis, with uh, linear affection of uh, the linear type of um, interstitial fibrosis, uh, mostly in middle lower regions, with deformation, enlargement, improve. Uh, in, uh, how these names? Uh, augmented, right? A lung pattern deformed. Uh, here is the bigger magnification with a nodular type of fibrosis. And one more combination of nodular and linear structures. So interstitial and nodular. It could be, it is almost always combined because in the majority of cases, uh, the very early X-ray changes in patients with silicosis are related to interstitial type of fibrosis with uh, further um, appearance and uh, growing of nodular and even nodal types of fibrosis. Here is the example of uh, advanced stage. Uh, it's clinical third stage and uh, uh, nodal, nodal or tumorous form of uh, silicosis with emphysema of lung, with pleural effusions, etc. The medical checkups uh, in relation to uh, prophylaxis of silicosis in uh, workers of appropriate occupations should be conducted annually. The um, group of doctors uh, which should be uh, should take part in these investigations include uh, therapeutist or general practitioner, uh, ENT specialist, and by indications uh, they could be a physiatrician because there is a great predisposition of these patients with silicosis to tuberculosis as well. Uh, then uh, due to the fact that uh, silicon dioxide is a carcinogenic agent, uh, there is a high risk of oncological pathology and sometimes Oncologists might be required and uh, dermatologists because of affection of uh, skin as extra pulmonary um, manifestation of the common disease. The obligatory investigations include uh, uh, X-ray of chest, spirography and spirometry of course, and uh, contraindications of uh, uh, further work in contact with silicon dioxide include uh, uh, revealed dystrophic changes of uh, respiratory organs, chronic uh, respiratory pathology, any kind of it, uh, expressed nasal septum deviation, recurrent because of disturbance of uh, nasal breathing and uh, uh, this person tries to breathe uh, by a mouth and a bigger amount of dust uh, enters the respiratory organs. The uh, recurrent uh, disease of skin, because in these conditions there is a high risk of uh, skin uh, affection. And of course, tuberculosis of lungs is a significant uh, limitation factor to work in contact with silicon dioxide. In case if uh, silicosis has been um, diagnosed, uh, at first stage of silicosis, the reasonable employment is indicated with probable uh, third invalidity group application. At second stage of silicosis, there is obligatory invalidity group of third or second um, grade. And uh, in case of third stage of silicosis, it's definitely invalidity uh, of second or even first Greens. And uh, peculiarities of silicosis include uh, a risk of acute development, late development, for instance, as well, continuous progressing. We, we are happy if we uh, transform it into a, a stable course, but unfortunately, it's very hard or even impossible. Asymptomatic course for prolonged time, and it might be manifested by complications mostly. Uh, predominantly nodular type of fibrosis, 
and uh, plenty of extra pulmonary changes in form of cholinica plant syndrome, uh, systemic infection of connective tissue, etc. About uh, seven minutes left for our lecture, so I will not uh, uh, get uh, deep inside the other uh, types of pneumoconiosis as I did for silicosis, just in general. Asbestosis is the representative of um, uh, of a group of uh, uh, silicatosis, right? And it's a type of pneumoconiosis caused by asbestos. Asbestos, in turn, uh, has the MPC of 2 to 8 milligrams per cubic meter, also depending on the size of dust particles and uh, shape of them as well. And uh, the main uh, places where there is a relatively high risk of uh, development of asbestosis are mining, uh, production of fire isolating materials, roof covering, uh, water pipes, uh, brick uh, blocks, uh, any any um, products uh, which contain asbestos. The working experience vary, uh, varies from 10 to 15 years, so it is not so... Um, uh, asbestosis usually develops not so rapidly no, after not so short exposure time as silicosis we discussed with you previously. In the pathogenesis of uh, asbestosis, uh, mainly mechanical and chemical components uh, play a significant role, and the significant uh, aspect of uh, influence of asbestos dust particles is a high risk of uh, malignization, of development of tumor. Here is the outlook of uh, one of the uh, uh, places of mining of uh, uh, asbestos containing ores. Asbestos itself is a mineral, it is mined from under the ground, and there is exposure to it during mining, during transportation, during refinery. Uh, you can see how uh, um, fibers uh, of these dust particles are small. You may see even in the specimen of the tissue by 1000 times ma magnification how small there is a let me magnify for you as small is the dust uh, particle dust uh, fiber uh, introduced in the tissue some more illustrations of uh, asbestos uh, fibers inside the tissues and uh, one of peculiarities of uh, asbestosis is uh, depositions of uh, asbestos fibers in the pleura and causing inflammation and deformation and even formation of uh, uh, pleural effusions and pleural plagues and uh, calcification, calcinates, right? Here is the outlook of this. Uh, fibrous uh, pleural plague. Here is the structure, the histological structure with, with the layer of inflammatory cells, homogenic layer and uh, a layer of uh, covering. And for instance, in case of uh, asbestos influence, uh, these fibers might be introduced into the germinative layer of epithelial, epithelial covering, the mucous membrane, and this may uh, cause uh, formation of adenocarcinoma, uh, so-called asbestos bodies. From clinical point of view, asbestos might be manifested by a wide spectrum of uh, symptoms, mostly related to irritative, um, carcinogenic effects, um, product, uh, causing of uh, inflammatory changes in mucous membranes of bronchi, further obstruction, and extra pulmonary manifestations, including those, let me show you, of this uh, so-called asbestos wars, it's actually um, papillomas, yeah, papillomatosis all over the skin, especially in those locations 
uh, which uh, have been exposed to this dust. On X3, as I already introduced to you, uh, we might observe mainly calcification of pleura with uh, non-specific changes of the rest of the uh, of the um, lungs. I mean, uh, from side of lungs, there is just usual uh, diffuse um, interstitial fibrosis, mostly bilateral in middle and lower regions. While uh, affection of uh, pleura might result in such as you can see um, fields of uh, plaques formation and you might observe this on the x-rays as well with the risk of uh, mesothelioma pleural mesothelioma it's a, a dangerous uh, tumor you may see uh, huge pleural effusions and plaques, calcification of them. One more. And here is the asbestos bodies present in uh, sputum expectorated from the patient. Medical checkups uh, very similar to what we have with, for people working under the influence of silicon dioxide annually with same uh, contraindications. Uh, to work and uh, expertise of working ability is almost same as in case of silicosis with the uh, invalidity group uh, reasonable employment etc the peculiarities of asbestosis includes clinical symptoms are more prominent and precede x-ray findings and in silicosis we had opposite situation even at third stage of pneumofibrosis it is not so expressed, I mean pneumofibrosis is not so expressed and it's silicosis with the exception of affection of pleura. And uh, there is a usually there are no usually uh, usually no inclinations to quick progression. And the severity of uh, the condition of the patient is determined mostly by complications with high risk of cancer. Uh, I mean uh, bronchogenic adenocarcinoma or mesothelioma development. And of course, there could be extrapulmonary manifestations. A part of what I showed to you, there is uh, plenty of other slides in this presentation. You may easily download it and use for your needs. Thank you for coming. It's time to finish our today's lecture. I am preparing the um, email to you with the all links and even to this lecture i'm going to uh, send to you after uploading to my vlog at youtube so if you have any questions feel free to ask everything was clear thank you so much professor thank you, thank you. Thank you. have a nice day thank take you. care thank you. Mm -hmm. Don't forget to register yourself, please. Because yeah, no, sure. no one has registered, you see? It's a blank. Okay. okay. Good luck. Bye. Oops, upload.